ROI perspective, so the a return on investment, what many people ask is, okay, well, that's great. Um, it's great to provide this, but how is that going to directly impact me? One area that was quick to jump on the rich internet application bandwagon was travel. Uh, the experience of booking a hotel room in an HTML world is very difficult to do. So this was the first group that really embraced the technology and said, you know what, if a user has to change dates on the fly, if they need to change their type of room, uh, this can all be done very easily without requiring them to resubmit the form like seven times. So the the Broadmoor Hotel and Blue Green Vacation Rentals, which was one of the first groups to really roll this type of technology out into their reservation process, saw an 89% increase in reservations, which brought their numbers up to nearly double the industry average. So that was quite significant. Um, Yankee Candle, another retailer that provides uh, uh, online purchasing of, of very custom candles, they saw an average order size and product revenue increase of 25% when they added product visualization tools to their website. And a, a more recent stat, uh, one that is quite interesting as well, is the North Face, which is an outdoor uh, apparel and outdoor activity retailer, um, had added in to their e-commerce site some rich information and imagery for very technical specific products, you know, like steam bags and climbing gear, those types of products where you need to know very specific elements about them. And they saw an increase of 90% um, from those additions to their site. Let's look at some of the applications that are really nicely suited for RIAs. If you're sitting back and listening and you're wondering, okay, that makes sense to go with the RIA path, what types of applications would this nicely work with? The first one is product catalogs and selectors. And we are going to see examples of each of these categories in the coming slides, so you'll get to visualize them a little bit more. Um, but one of the challenges that users typically face is when they arrive at a website, especially a site when they're, they're looking for a product, it's very difficult today to find and to locate the right product. So product selectors are really great for this because you can sift through volumes and volumes of content quite nicely. And because you have that really immersive and rich experience, you can see product catalog imagery and, and uh, you can look at a product from different angles and you can even see videos of those products quite nicely. Um, product visual visualizations and configurators, and that's not a typo, it's a strange element in that. Configurators is not actually a word, but it's one that's been embraced quite nicely by the industry for these tools that allow you to build your own product. So you may have encountered them on different websites uh, for building vehicles, um, building your own uh, with furniture, those types of things, and visualization, which allows you to make customizations to a product and see what that end product is going to look like. Uh, productivity applications as well. There's been a number of these pop up lately. Everything from you know a word processor that you use web to a photo editor. These are becoming really more popular and uh, more uh, embraced by uh, consumers. Entertainment applications, there's quite a bit out there in terms of music applications and uh, video applications and games as well that use rich internet application technology. So if we start with the first category of uh, product catalogs and selectors, um, this is a really nice tool. Uh, it's a company called uh, Viama and what they are looking to do is uh, provide travel bookings. Uh, for consumers, so you can go on and choose, like many other sites on the web, you can choose your departure city, you can choose your dates, you can make all of the choices that you're looking for, but you get to visualize in real time what your trip is. So you're going from Montreal to Chicago and back. Uh, if we look at the more detailed view of this site, what's really interesting here is the richness that they provide in terms of the imagery, as well as the abilities that they provide for drilling down into those search results. As we can see here, we have uh, you know 18 results with different price tags and different criteria. If I wanted to narrow down my results so that I had no stopovers and I was then choosing to travel between 11 and 
one instead of eight and one, I can use these nice little slider bars that you see to adjust those search criteria, and the results will adapt and adjust in real time. I can also follow the potential flight path and say, okay, no, actually, I want to move this flight from stopping in Chicago to stopping in Washington, and it'll update everything around uh, in, in sequence as well, which is quite nice. Um, another great example of finding products, and this is a really difficult uh, product to purchase, is diamonds. Anyone who's ever made a purchase of a diamond knows that there are so many different variables that go into a diamond, especially a diamond ring. You can choose what the cut of the diamond is, what the clarity, the color, all of those elements go into defining what diamonds fit into the specific category you're looking for. This. This is on Amazon.com. It's a, a really nice example of being able to choose different criteria and see results update in real time. For example, if I was interested in changing the size of the diamond I was looking to purchase and bringing it up to two carat, um, then it would narrow down my search results and perhaps say something like, 2,400 diamonds are available that match my criteria. So being able to provide those real-time drill downs and results to users immediately um, is really, really valuable, especially in a shopping or a product selection process. What's interesting about this as well is that uh, if you were to try to accomplish the same task using HTML forms, that user would have to choose the criteria, submit the form, receive the feedback from the server, adjust the criteria, resubmit the form, it becomes a very long and challenging search process. So this makes it a little more um, responsive and, and more of a smoother interaction with the consumer. This is an example of a product configurator. I know many of you have probably seen this type of application before where you get to build your own product and choose any of the accessories, colors, uh, features that you would want to add. A lot of car manufacturers have rolled these out over the last several years. Some of them have done a great job on them, and some of them have used a little bit more limited technology, and it's a little bit more challenging for users to interact. So if we look at uh, this particular example from Hummer, it's a really nice application, very rich visuals, very clear to understand where you're going. It walks you through the process of uh, choosing your vehicle and making those customizations. And if I'm interested in changing the colors, I can just go into the palette, choose an orange vehicle, add a rack, a front grille, and my price and all of my features update accordingly. So this is quite a nice tool, not only for consumers to be able to interact with your brand, but for consumers to be able to sort of pre-shop and get a sense of what they're looking for before they either come in, in, in store or buy online. It's also an excellent tool when you have a model where you're selling through sales reps or through resellers because you're providing with them, them with the ability to do that same level of customization. Uh, so it's quite nice from that perspective. And configurators are not just for products. If you look at, if you're a service provider and you're a telecom or um, providing uh, services to clients where they are able to build their own packages, this is a great way to do that. So this is an example of a, a local telecom here in Quebec that offers phone service, telev television, and internet. And it allows consumers to go in and build their own package and to see right away what their total cost per month and their total savings is. What's interesting about this is a lot of the times organizations that offer service packages have very specific rules where if you choose one from column A, one from column B, then you receive a 10% discount. But if you choose one from column C2, then you get $5 additional. It can be really confusing for consumers to, to build that mentally in their mind. But using a tool like this, they can see exactly what they're, they're signing up for before they really jump into a contractor commitment. We were talking about productivity apps. And there's uh, a number of them out there. Um, anyone who follows finance may be familiar with this one, which is Google Finance. And uh, you can see I took this snapshot a couple of months ago because uh, today that stock is, I think, well up over 700. So anyone who's uh, purchased that one is probably very, very happy today. Um, if we look at this application, though, what's really nice about it is that it provides the same interaction we saw with the Amazon application where you can use sliders to change the, 
the uh, timeline and to be able to drill down as well into specific exam events. So if I wanted to see why was there a peak in the stock on this date, I can look at the corresponding letter here on the right and dig down into the announcement to understand a little bit more about how everything plays. That's one example of a productivity application. The next one is actually uh, doing a tiny bit of self-promo here. Uh, this is something some of you may have seen. This is uh, the INM eLibrary application. And this is an application that allows organizations to bundle up and uh, present volumes of content in a really accessible way and to provide that search criteria that users need. So this is a library of documents that you can drill down into by year, by keyword, pull up a list and actually even pull up the document right on screen. So it, it's great for corporate libraries or great for any type of organizational package of information. Uh, so that's one example. Uh, another one here from a productivity application perspective. We've seen a number of these pop up recently, which is a photo editing solution. And even uh, Adobe mentioned or announced a couple weeks ago that they're making a, a version of Photoshop available in the same fashion. This is the type of tool where you can upload your own photo or choose a photo off their website and make real-time adjustments to that photo. So if I had this photo of a daffodil and I wanted to really saturate the colors and make the, the color scheme a bit different on it, I can do that in just a couple of quick clicks and then download that back to my desktop or share it online with uh, any of my uh, friends and family. So this type of productivity application I mean, a few years ago, it would be unheard of to have this type of power available over the web. Uh, you know, it was something that was reserved for Photoshop and applications that were you know, several hundred dollars and up. Now, this is available to users for free in, in many cases. If we look at entertainment applications, 